so hello guys we are back with the most talked topic these day, days that is about the omicron variant which is again the new variant not so new now of covid 19 the basic uh, motive of this uh, uh, session is basically to clear the doubts of uh, the general public and also the medicos who are treating the covid patients and uh, while making these slides i learned a lot from it so i hope it will even help you i have also covered in the end uh, in a very brief the newer antivirals and the monoclonal antibody which have come into picture not so a uh, positive role but yes they are being studied they are being talked about so we all shall know about it so yes so COVID-19 its variant came into picture that is Omicron variants so uh, WHO has named has its name that is B11529 and they named it as Omicron okay so yes yeah so uh, that is about the Omicron variant okay so the, the first uh, we'll see that when the first ca case uh, was detected when it was reported okay so the first case of Omicron variant was first reported to WHO from South Africa on 24 November 2021 preliminary evidence suggests an increased risk of reinfection several labs have indicated that for one widely used PCR test one of the three target gene is not detected that is the S gene is I have uh, covered it later also but S gene is not detected so mostly in the cases it has been seen that there is a S gene dropout so the best the gold standard for this is to go for genomic sequencing now see how did, does the timeline uh, went uh, it, it was first reported from the South Africa in November 24 2021 and the first confirmed case came out from the US on December 1, 2021. Okay, so on November 26th, uh, they designate designated as a variant of concern by WHO. Okay, so it was uh, named as a variant of concern VOC. Okay, now why it is significant? Most of the news, most of the news channels, we are seeing that it is a mild variant. So, for, for whom it is mild and for whom it is severe? If it is mild, why government is so much worried about it? And why doctors are so much worried about it? See, if you do not have any significant comorbidity, if you do not have obesity, if you have a very good uh, health, healthy lifestyle, you are using all the COVID-related precautions, it's mild for you but it might happen that you become the carrier and you are spreading the disease to the person who, who is above 60 years of age who has comorbidities who is diabetic who has the risk of chronic kidney disease even in my last lecture i discussed in a very brief that the relation of covid with aki and diabetes so for them it is very serious so in every home there are elderly there are mother and father whom we need to protect there are children there are people who are uh, on a immunocompromised medication there are people who are on a transplant so these people for them it is a very serious uh, issue it can take their life so we have to wear masks to protect them rather than from protecting us because uh, youngsters they have a good immunity they will heal but the precautions are again very important okay so it has been demonstrated to be associated with one or more of the following changes so what was the uh, you know difference from the delta variant or uh, that all there's an increased transmissibility we have all seen that the cases are rising at a very high rate there's increase in violence or change in clinical disease presentation okay and yes there is seen that there's a decreased decrease in effectiveness uh, in public also you go to the market they are not wearing masks you go anywhere people are like it is a mild variant because they are being taught that but they are not taught in the right direction that they have to use the precautions always can the currently used diagnostic methods detect omicron that the, the answer again the s gene dropout voila. so uh, we'll see so what happens is s gene is not seen so that becomes a problem so genome sequencing is a good tool even the rapid antigen test shows that you are positive okay so these are some few questions which are being asked
can the currently used diagnostic method detect Omicron? So it, uh, you know that your RT-PCR, it detects S gene, E gene and the nucleocapsid gene. Okay, but in Omicron, the S gene is heavily mutated. Some of the primers may lead to, may lead to uh, resulting in uh, absence of S gene. So S gene is absent, so there's a S gene dropout. So genome sequencing is must. I, I think I've repeated it twice or thrice. So what are the precautions should we take? The precautions are same as we, we were using from 1.5 years. Mask yourself properly. Take both doses of vaccine if not yet taken. Maintain social distancing. Maintain good ventilation to maximum possible extent and do not panic. Will the existing vaccine work against Omicron? So it has been seen that there is no evidence to suggest that existing vaccine do not work on Omicron. Some of the mutations has reported that there is a decreased efficacy of vaccine. So now from 10th of Jan, there has been launched a booster dose for the healthcare workers and for the people who are above 60 years of age. So yes, that will protect. But yes, there is decrease in efficacy of the vaccine because it's a new variant. However, vaccine protection is also by antibodies as well as by cellular immunity which is expected to be relatively better preserved, right? So what are the treatments and the uh, agents we are using? So first of all, we should know that the treat treatment has been the same. If you are getting fever, you have to take an antipyretic. If you are getting uh, cough, if it is productive, you have to take tussives. If it is non-productive, you have to take anti -tussives. You have to take some, uh, you know, uh, anti-allergics with it. Steam inhalation remains the most important part and yes, until or unless it is an upper respiratory tract infection, you should not, you should not not take any kind of steroids, any type of antivirals because, you know, your body is, uh, you know, fighting with it naturally. So you also need to be natural with your body. But yes, you have to monitor yourself. You have to monitor your SpO2. That should remain above 94%. You have to see your pulse rate. You have to see that you are not getting breathless. Even if you are getting any of the symptoms or your fever is not relieving for 10, 14 days. Yes, you should go to your local doctor, concern a doctor, go to some government hospital. You'd be treated free of cost. So yes, these are some newer things which are being uh, talked about these days. So these antivirals are talked remdesivir we have seen in the first wave how much remdesivir was used misused and the, the actually this uh, the the new variant it is about treating and not over treating uh, so what people are doing they are getting over treated and they are getting sick so you should know when and where we have to get the dose and what drug will be helpful or not okay so remdesivir we have talked about in the last wave the newer drugs we need to talk about, one is the molnupiravir and other is the Paxlovid. It is not available in India right now. Uh, molnupiravir is available. So ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, fevipiravir and azithromycin, they were used in the first wave, even in the second wave. But uh, uh, it has been seen that there has not been a much role and it is still controversial and yes, there can be a debate on it uh, that okay they are helpful for some people they have conducted studies they found it to be helpful they even found supplements to be helpful but supplements has a role of antioxidants uh, nothing more than that uh, okay uh, okay people are talking the uh, uh, over exuberant role of vitamin d but yes uh, things are yet controversial then we have some monoclonal antibodies anti-inflammatory agents like inhaled budesonides other agent convulsant plasma again a controversial role let's see okay so antivirals you have you have anti-inflammatory anticoagulants monoclonal antibodies and supplements today we'll see the antivirals anticoagulation we already know low molecular weight happen or happen anti-inflammatory you were using uh, paracetamol anaproxen monoclonal antibodies this is a newer topic supplements that same vitamin c d and zinc okay so these were the drugs which are, were used, ivermectin now no role, hydroxychloroquine no role, favipiravir no role, convulsant plasma controversial, these are lopinavir, ritonavir, zemdesivir, molnupiravir, paxlovid. So these are the drugs that are, have come into picture that are more talked about these days. So hydroxychloroquine. It is a antimicrobial. It inhibits the locomotion of neutrophils and chemotexes of eosinophils. What dose was used? 
400 mg BD for the day one and 400 mg OD for the next four days. Ivermectin, semi-synthetic anti-helminthic agent, dose 500 microgram per kg once daily for three days. Favipiravir, antiviral medication used to treat influenza in Japan. It is a pyrazine carboxamide derivative. It causes selective inhibition of viral RNA dependent RNA polymerase. These are not used now. Then you have monopyravir, much talked about these days, and I even like I have hundred of questions on it that should be used, should be not used, and when to use, when not to use. So, uh, what is the mechanism of action? It forms NHCTP, which is incorporated into SARS-CoV-2 RNA by viral RNA polymerase, resulting in errors in viral genome and viral replication. Basically, it also inhibits a viral replication. Where it is indicated, it is indicated in mild patients. With high risk of progression, we'll see in the next slide what are the high risks of progression. What is our dose? On uh, for first five days, you have to give it 200 mg twice daily, followed by uh, followed by like you have to terminate it. And if the, still the symptoms are there, you can give it for the next five days. No dosage adjustment in any CKD or CLD. That like, that means no dosage in adjustment in ve renal or hepatic pa disease patients. If not to be used in the patients who are less than 18 years of age and uh, it has an adverse effect, it is potentially mutagenic and it also causes cartilage toxicity, right? So what was the high risk for progression which you can use Molnupiravir use kar sakte ho. Age more than who are mild. First of all, that is a very important word that it is used only for the mild cases. Others may iska itna role nahi aega, right? So, uh, high risk of progression, uh, age more than 60, active cancer, chronic kidney disease, diabetes, COPD, heart failure, coronary artery disease, cardiomyopathy, BMI more than 30, that means obese. What is a warning? Uh, it, uh, technically, it should not be used in a pregnant female and if the patient, uh, the, the lady, she is on contraception, contraception in female who may become pregnant during therapy and four days after last dose of therapy, okay? Now, next you have a, a Paxlovid. Paxlovid is a combination of Nilmatrilevil and Ritonavir. Okay, so what where the Nilmatrilevil will act and where Ritonavir will act? Nilmatrilevil will act on a protease inhibitor. It will act on a protease and your Ritonavir, it will inhibit the CYP3A mediated metabolism of Nilmatrilevil. Okay, what is the dose of Nilmatrilevil? You give 300 mg. And for right to level, you give 100 mg twice daily for 5 days. Initiate as soon as after diagnosis and within 5 days of symptom onset. So uh, again, uh, it has to be little carefully used in the patient who have renal disease. If the EGFR is more than 60 ml per minute, it is safe. If EGFR is 30 to 60 ml per minute, you have to reduce the dose of millimeter level by 150 and right to level can be given same BD. And if the GFR, EGFR is less than 30, you should not use this drug. Hepatic impairment no, in child books score A and B, no dose adjustment and child, child book score C, it should not be given. What are the side effects? Uh, it Because it is a, you have seen here, that it causes hepatic changes and renal changes so should not be given in trans amenitis patient jaundice patient hypertensive uh, patient develop hypertension diarrhea dysgeusia myalgia and steven johnson syndrome and uh, okay anti en so uh, it has a uh, high interactions it increases the concentration of amlodipine anti hypertensive uh, anti coagulant like abisixaban artemether lumefentrin statins bedaquiline and uh, steroids so it will increase their concentration it will decrease the concentration of artisanate atavaquin and voriconazole and uh, even if the patient is on att let's say he is on rifampicin and inh it will decrease the concentration of this drug so if you have given this drug to the tubercular patient you need to give more dose because rifampicin and phenytoin will reduce its dose okay uh, then you have a pregnancy and breastfeeding okay no evidence so it should not be given Monoclonal antibodies, they will target the spike protein SARS-CoV-2. What are the available options? We have Cassidy-Mivab with Imadivimab. We have a Bell-Navivimab and Atasivimab. And we have Sotrovimab. Today, we will talk about Cassidy 
and imde and so forth okay so uh, first of all cassie we map and imde we map so cassie and imde okay so what are the indications again the indication is mild covid 19 who are at a high risk for progression to severe covid 19 so what are the high risk high risk bmi that means obese there the bmi in monopyravir that was more than 30 here the bmi is more than 25 pregnancy chronic kidney disease or lung disease diabetes immunosuppression cardiovascular disease sickle cell disease neurodevelopmental disorder tracheostomy gastrostomy and older age more than 65 so these patients can progress to your severe covid 19 so in these you can give a try of cassian in there what is the dose it is best given iv okay 600 mg cassie 600 mg imde within 10 days of symptom so it's a single dose and within 10 days it should be given early given the better the benefit the best part is it can be given to the patients of cld ckd because it does not cause any hepatic or renal impairment administration is infusion adverse effect again the same the nausea vomiting and the local reactions contraindication any uh, any severe hypersensitivity is a contraindication okay uh, so we have next we have sotrovimab sotrovimab again for the mild covid 19 who are at a higher risk for progression to severe covid again the higher risk for progression will remain the same again the dosing is again iv the better 500 mg once a single dose is the best there is no dose modification needed in hematic and renal impairment. Administration is infusion. And uh, again, it will cause local reaction, diarrhea, pruritus, mm -hmm. and skin rash. Right? Uh, there is a much hype drug talked about uh, these days, fluoxamine. This is a SSRI and it is also said to be anti-inflammatory and antiviral. Still, the trials are going on. Its dose is 100 mg BD for 10 days. Again, as early given, better. So, there has been trials of Brazilian multicenter trial in adults with high risk for progression. Primary outcome for, for, of hospitalization or observation in emergency for more than 6 hours. So, what was the primary outcome? That there has been a, a dicey benefit, not a very good benefit. Yeah, now what are the role of supplements? Vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc. Uh, vitamin C, there are insufficient data for the COVID-19 treatment guideline panel to recommend either for or against the use of vitamin C for the treatment of COVID-19. Uh, so we do give okay that because there is no, uh, you know, if there is no uh, side effect, uh, let it be okay, there is no benefit, no problem, at least it's not causing any side effect. Vitamin D, there are so insufficient data for the panel to recommend either for or against the use of vitamin D. Zinc, there are insufficient data for the panel to recommend either for or against the use of zinc. The panel recommends against using zinc supplementation above the recommended dietary allowance. So you don't have to consume uh, your dolo and your zinc and any supplement like uh, gems because it is a medication and you should remember it is a medication even if you are taking a simple paracetamol consult a doctor uh, if he says take this dose take it because every drug has some or another side effect so it should be take, be very carefully given so this is about it thank i hope this lecture will help you a bit because it has helped me uh, i have learned about new drugs while making this lecture and i hope uh, we can guide more people and if anyone have any doubt, they can write it down. And if you like this, uh, what whatever the discussion we have done, you can like the page, you can subscribe it. Thank you.